Hello and welcome. This is Janilata Bhattrai from Single World News. Republic Day commemorates the adoption of the Constitution of India on January 26, 1950. While India gained independence from the British rule in 1947, it wasn't until January 26, 1950 that the Constitution of India came into effect and the country became a sovereign state, leaving the British Commonwealth of Nations, declaring it a republic. The Dominion of India, officially the Union of India, was an independent dominion in the British Commonwealth of Nations, existing between 15th August 1947 and 26 January 1950. Until its independence, India had been ruled as an informal empire by the United Kingdom. The empire, also called the British Indian Empire, consisted of regions collectively called British India that were directly administered by the British government and regions called the princely states that were ruled by Indian rulers under a system of paramountcy. And its laws were based on the modified Colonial Government of India Act 1935. The Constituent Assembly held its first session on December 9, 1946, and the last on November 26, 1949. And then the constitution was adopted a year later. Dr. B. R. Ambedkar reduced the drafting committee of the constitution. On this day, India also marks constitution day. The assembly held multiple sessions over two years and finally adopted the constitution in 1950. Two handwritten versions of the agreement, one in Hindi and the other in English, were signed by 308 members of the Constituent Assembly on January 24, 1950. During British rule, the government designed several legislations during their rule in India in order to run the country at their own whims. Unfortunately, some of these legislations are still retained by the Indian lawmakers and are very much relevant to date so much so that these laws are a part of our everyday routine. Section 141 of the IPC says, if there is an assembly of five or more persons who have the common intent to show criminal force or to resist the execution of any law, then that assembly of persons becomes unlawful. This provision of the law is often considered vague and has on several occasions led to the prohibition of peaceful gathering. The colonial authority utilized Section 144, which was enacted in 1860, to suppress nationalist revolutionaries' protest and prevent riots. Section 144 allows the local magistrate extensive authority to call for an end to any demonstration, peaceful or otherwise. Like Section 141, sedition under Section 124A of the Indian Penal Code as hatred or contempt excited against the government by means of words, written or spoken, or through visible representation. The law of sedition has received mass criticism on the ground that it stifles the freedom of speech and expression of the citizens of a country. For the same reasons, this law was abolished in the UK in 2009. However, it continues to be in force in India. The Britishers stayed in the country long enough to control and shape the legal system that is followed today. While some of the laws have only assisted the lawmakers of the country to justifiably draft the law of the land, some of the archaic laws, which were only aimed at exploiting the accused need doing away with. Let us know your thoughts in the comment section below. To get more updates and information, don't forget to like, share and subscribe our channel and also press the bell icon for the latest notifications.